Hi, my name is Amanda Damon and I'm a Homeworks by Precept consultant in Augusta, Maine. Today, we're going to be taking a look at Life Science 5th Edition. In your textbook kit, you will receive Teacher's Editions Part A and B, your student textbook, your student activity manual, your activity manual answer key, and your tests and your test keys. In this course, your student will be looking at the living things of our world, such as plants, animals, and people. Through various activities, labs, and ethics discussions, they will also have the opportunity to look at science through the lens of a biblical worldview. Let's start with taking a look inside of our teacher's editions. In the beginning of your teacher's edition, you will have a table of contents labeling the different units and chapters in the book. We have Unit 1, The Pattern of Life, Unit 2, Microorganisms and Plants, Unit 3, The Animal Kingdom, Unit 4, The Human Body, and Unit 5, Interacting with the Biosphere. Notice that these two units are listed in gray. Those units are covered in the Book B of the Teacher's Edition. You also have another table of contents listing different lab exercises, case studies, ethics discussions, worldview sleuthing, and careers, as well as the different appendixes, the glossary, and the index of your book. Next, we have an overview of the different features of your student's textbook. We have the chapter opener, essential question, key questions, case studies, italic terms, boldface terms, chapter summary, and review questions. In continuing with features of your student's textbook, they will also have ethics boxes, lab exercises, career boxes, and worldview sleuthing boxes. You will also find some notes on the features of your teacher's edition, such as lesson plans, teaching the material, and margin notes. Your margin notes will provide different ideas, background information, or additional materials you may need for your student. There are different icons that will guide you as you are teaching. Biblical worldview shaping, best practices, demonstration, differentiated instruction, difficult concept, equipment, helpful tip, lab, math, recall, and resources. If you see this check mark for a helpful tip, it will provide a suggested teaching strategy that may help your student understand a particular concept. When you come across the resources icon, this points out additional resources that may help you teach the material. You can find these resources on the Homeschool Hub. If you have used a previous edition of Life Science, you may find these notes here helpful as they are listing what things have changed for this fifth edition. Next, we have a lesson plan overview for each unit of the course. You will have the section, the student edition pages, the teacher edition pages, different teacher resources, and then the objectives and the essential questions. Next to each chapter lesson plan, you will notice that there are a number of days in parentheses. This is the approximate number of days it will take to complete the chapter. In your teacher's edition, you will have a view of your student's textbook. Let's take a look at Unit 1, The Pattern of Life. In this unit, we have five chapters, God's Living World, Cell Structure, Information in the Cell, Genetics, and Change in Nature. At the beginning of each unit, we have a note from a different scientist. Here in Unit 1, we have something from microbiologist Dr. Kevin Anderson. In the margin notes, there will also be the testimony of your scientist. This testimony can help explain to your student how they have been able to work in the world looking at science through a biblical worldview. At the beginning of each chapter, you will have the different sections in that chapter along with their corresponding page numbers. We have section 1A, Seeing Life Through the Bible's Story, 
1B, understanding life, and 1C, learning about life. In your margin notes for chapter one, you will see our chapter one objectives. Justify the pursuit of science from a biblical worldview, give evidence that life is divinely engineered, and explain how life science works in the real world. We have an overview which breaks down each section in chapter one, as well as lab activities that will happen in this chapter. At the beginning of each lesson, you will have an essential question. For chapter one, we have why should a Christian study life science? As you teach your lesson, follow the notes in your teacher's edition for different ideas and activities to go along with the chapter. For example, for the first day of this chapter, you can use your unit opener, which is about the island of life, Madagascar, to get your students thinking about science and Christianity. And we have the question, what role does a scientist's Christian beliefs have in his work to get your students thinking? On the next page, we have some notes for worldview shaping and some discussion questions. As we continue on with the lesson, we have some biblical worldview shaping, the option for some additional resources to add into your lesson, as well as a helpful tip on remembering the days of creation. In section 1.3, we come across our first ethics box. This ethics box will give your student the opportunity to look at an issue in life science through a biblical worldview. At the end of each section, your student will have review questions in their text. The answers to these review questions can be found in the margin of your teacher's manual. Here in chapter one, we have a lab exercise focusing on life and engineering a microscope. The questions in the lab exercise, you will have the answers to in your teacher's manual. Make sure to read the notes in your margin as these will help you as you teach the lab and prepare your student. At the end of each chapter, there will also be chapter review questions. The answers to these questions can be found in your teacher manual. Here in unit three, your student will be learning about the animal kingdom. There are three chapters in this unit, animal classification, animal structure and function, and animal reproduction and behavior. Here, we have a note from Dr. Georgia Purdom. In the back of your teacher's edition, there are various appendixes to assist you in teaching the course. Here, for Appendix A, we have reading tables, graphs, and scientific diagrams. Appendix B will assist with how to create graphic organizers. There will be several times throughout the course that your student will have to do this. In Appendix C, we have the periodic table of elements. For Appendix D, we have a combining forms list. This list will help your students decode some of the larger words scientists use. For Appendix E, we have various rubrics that you will need in grading your student. Appendix F is an ethics essay grading rubric. Appendix G, we have animal bingo tokens. Appendix H is your in-text lab materials list. These are listed alphabetically with the item, the size if applicable, number required, the chapter, and any remarks to go along with it. Here we see in chapter four, we will need red and white marbles, 30 of each. In our notes, we have that you may substitute another color as long as both of those colors are in contrast to each other. For Appendix I, we have Biblical Worldview Shaping, Scope and Sequence with the worldview topics along with the chapter that you can find them in. And lastly, in Appendix J, we have notes on how to explain the gospel. We also have a glossary as well as an index. In book B of your teacher's edition, you will also have another table of contents. Note the items in gray are found in book A of your teacher's edition. In this book, we will cover unit four and unit five, the human body and interacting with the biosphere. For chapter 15, our title is transport. 
Our objectives for this lesson are to describe the structures and function of the various parts of the respiratory, circulatory, and lymphatic systems, show how the respiratory, circulatory, and lymphatic systems work together to maintain homeostasis, and evaluate blood and organ donation on the basis of biblical teaching. Next, we have an overview of each section, the need for air, the respiratory system, breathing, the body's delivery system, blood, blood flow, lymph, and lymph flow. The lab activities in this chapter are I'll huff and I'll puff, which measures the effect of exercise on respiration rate, and the drumming of the heart, where your student will investigate changes in heart rate due to exercise. At the end of each lesson, you will have a class closer or a ticket out the door. This will be a fun activity or a question for your students to answer before you end the lesson. Here we have our first lab for chapter 15. Hold it. We have our question that we will be answering. How does exercise affect holding your breath? We have the procedure, the analysis, and conclusion. Any in-text lab questions your student has, you will have the answers to in your teacher's edition. In the back of book B of your teacher's edition, you will have the same appendixes and glossaries that you do in book A. And now we'll move on to the student text. In your student's textbook, they will have a table of contents listing each of the units and the chapters within that unit. They will also have a list of their lab exercises, case studies, ethics discussions, worldview sleuthing, careers, appendixes, glossary, and index. Have your student look over the Take a Peek Inside pages so they can learn about the different features of their textbook. For example, at the beginning of each section, there is an essential question, followed by smaller questions that they can ask as they go through that section. They will have case studies, which are opportunities to investigate specific areas in life science to apply what they have learned in the chapter. There are ethics boxes, which gives your student an opportunity to look at different ethical issues in life science and apply a biblical worldview. They will also come across career boxes, which will feature different careers in life science. At the beginning of each unit, they will have the unit title, as well as the chapters within that unit. For unit one, we have the pattern of life. There are five chapters in this unit. God's living world, cell structure, information in the cell, genetics, and change in nature. At the bottom of our unit page, we have a note from microbiologist Dr. Kevin Anderson. Here in Unit 2, we will be looking at microorganisms and plants. There are four chapters in this unit, bacteria and viruses, protists and fungi, the plant kingdom, and plant function. At the bottom of our Unit 2 page, we have a note from plant geneticist Dr. John Sanford. At the beginning of each chapter, we have a chapter opener, which discusses different issues and developments in life science that can be looked at through a biblical worldview. At the beginning of each section, we have our essential question. Here in section B, our question is, are viruses alive? We also have our key questions for the section. Here we have our first lab exercise for chapter six called hand washing, it's a good practice. All of the equipment and materials needed we have listed, as well as the procedure to follow for the lab. If your student has any in-text lab questions, the answers to those questions can be found in your teacher manual. At the end of each chapter, there will be a chapter summary going over each section. You will have their different terms, along with the corresponding page number. Chapter review question answers can be found in your teacher's manual.
In the back of the student textbook, your student will have different appendixes to help them as they go through their lessons. And next we have the student activity manual. In your student activities manual, they will have a table of contents listing the different units, chapters within that unit, and the review pages and labs that they will be doing. Keep in mind that the labs in your activity manual are different from the labs in your student textbook. Make sure to go over the safety procedures with your student before performing any labs. Throughout your activity manual, you will notice different safety icons. These are there to alert you to possible danger within the lab. The top of each review page is clearly labeled with the section that it corresponds with. You'll also notice pages are perforated to make for easy removal. Throughout your activity manual, you will come across various labs. Keep in mind, these labs are different from the labs found in the student textbook. Key questions will be listed along with equipment needed and procedure. Your student's activity manual will also have review pages going over each section. The appendixes in the back of your student activity manual will include laboratory and first aid rules, different lab equipment, various laboratory techniques, and the STEM design process. And now we'll take a quick look at our activity book answer key. Your activity manual answer key will have a view of your student's activity manual along with any answers written in red. You will also have a space for notes below. Pay attention to your margins. As you can see here, we have a helpful tip with working with slides. In the back of your activity manual answer key, you will have the same appendixes as your student's activity manual. You will also have an equipment and materials list for the labs in the activity manual. These are listed alphabetically with the size needed, the number required, the lab it corresponds with, and any remarks. This materials list is for the labs in the activity manual. The labs in your student textbook you can find an equipment and materials list for in the back of the student text. Your assessments packet will include all of the quizzes and the tests for your student's course. Your answer key will also have the answers for all of these as well. Well, that's it for Life Science 5th Edition. I hope you and your student have a great time with this course. Happy learning!